Hello everyone, my name is Katya and I'm a first year PG student at Harvard in the Applied Mathematics program. In this video I'm going to share my PG application, like my background, my stats, things I did in college that helped me get into my graduate program. I hope this video is going to be useful if you're applying to PG programs yourself. As always, feel free to skip around with the timestamps that I provided in the video description so you can save a little bit of time. But before we begin, I wanted to mention the sponsor of today's video, which is Annalisa. Annalisa is a New York-based jewelry company, and their jewelry is long-lasting, super beautiful, very affordable, and sustainable. Their jewelry goes pretty much with anything, so like right now I'm wearing this necklace, and also this bracelet, and also this earring, just look at this. Oh my god. And I've been wearing this non-stop since I got the jewelry and I love it. Annalisa has a great policy on sustainability. They offset 100% of their emissions from the moment that their materials are getting sourced to when the customer throws away the jewelry. Plus, Annalisa has free and fast shipping across the US and very affordable shipping options to places outside of the US. And I don't think you will need it, but Annalisa also has a two-year warranty program, so if you don't like something you can always return the product and i'm sure you won't need it because their jewelry is long lasting and it does not tarnish which is great their jewelry is called plated which means that it's real gold but it's plated so it's much more affordable and their pieces start at 39 dollars and you can get 20 percent off with this promo code i will also leave it in the video description definitely check out the link in the video description and get some beautiful jewelry <laughs> thank you Annalisa, for sponsoring this video so a little bit about myself. I am an immigrant from Russia, which means that I grew up in Russia. I was there up until I was 17 and then I moved to the US for college. I went to Princeton for my undergrads and then I got a green card. So now I'm a permanent resident in the US. So I did my undergrad at Princeton. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. Yes, I'm an artist. <laughs> and I graduated with honors this past year in May of 2023. And I applied to graduate programs during the fall of my senior year in college. So I applied during my last year in college. I did not want to do anything in between. So I wanted to go straight into grad school right after college. I'm interested broadly in machine learning, the intersection of pure math with machine learning, in particular geometry and topology. In my case, I applied to around 11 credit programs in total, and so I applied to applied mathematics programs, but also some computer science programs. And one thing to note is that you can apply to programs in the fields that you didn't major in. So for example, I majored in mathematics in college and I did not have any formal computer science background, but that did not prevent me from getting into computer science PG programs. Yeah, so as I said, I applied to 11 PhD programs and I got into three. I got into Harvard Applied Math program, into UC Berkeley Applied Math program, and into UC San Diego, um, their computer science PhD program. Just to give you some idea, for Harvard, the acceptance rate into the engineering school was 5% this past year when I applied, and Applied Mathematics is a program within the engineering school. So that's just like to give you some idea about how competitive this application process is and hopefully videos like this can help you navigate this admissions process and you can succeed. Anyways, when you apply to PhD programs, the most important thing that the admissions committee care about is your research experience. Me personally, I had a lot of research experience. That's what I like doing. I've been doing research since high school and I'm still doing it, which is crazy. It's been like eight years now. Um, I feel old. When I came to college, I started doing research my freshman year and I came to college as an astrophysics major. So I also did the research in astrophysics. I studied exoplanets. I think it is definitely helpful to have a lot of research experience if you want to do grad school right after your undergrad. Basically, your goal is to show that you can be a successful researcher. And in order to demonstrate that, you can rely on your previous research experiences and talk about what you accomplished there. I also had some publications. I had one first author publication in astrophysics. I think it's helpful to have publications, even if it's not in the field in which 
you plan to do your graduate studies in because it shows in general that you can write research papers and you can complete research projects successfully. Yeah, so in my case I didn't have any publications in like machine learning say, but I still had something else and I think it was helpful. I think in college I had around five different research experiences. I also had some relevant internship experience, so I interned at Apple as a machine learning engineering intern. I know some people have concerns about interning in college when you know you want to go to grad school, as in some people think that the admissions committee, the grad admissions committee might look down on this kind of experiences because these are outside of academia and maybe you should have spent your summer doing research with professors as opposed to interning at some tech companies, but I think it depends on the professor a lot. Um, so in my experience, all of the professors who interviewed me for my graduate school programs, they found my internship experience pretty valuable and useful. Um, and I think especially in something like machine learning, it's definitely okay to have internship experience as opposed to just doing academic research. And also, when I did research in college, I did projects in many different fields. Most of them weren't related to machine learning. And I think it's completely okay to explore different fields in college and to do something interdisciplinary or just sample many different fields. I think it was a helpful experience for me in the sense that I am familiar with multiple different scientific fields now and I have some understanding of different problems within those fields. And so now when I'm in graduate school and working on machine learning research, developing new models, new tools, I am more aware of what's happening in other fields and therefore can hopefully more effectively find applications of my research. In general, when I had my PhD admissions interviews, the professors who interviewed me told me that they actually valued my experience, for example, having a strong background in mathematics when I applied to computer science programs, because when you have a non-traditional background, when you have something that's unusual, you bring a new perspective and when you do research, like having fresh new perspectives, different perspectives is what drives research in many ways. This might be an extreme case, but in college I didn't take a single computer science class or machine learning class and I just did math and physics for the most part. I was kind of worried about that because on paper I did not have any formal credentials in machine learning, but I had a lot of experience and I self-studied machine learning, I, I taught myself machine learning. That's my background and for the most part I guess the professors who admitted me did not care that I did not have a formal background in machine learning just because you can learn all that stuff pretty fast. So yeah, I think it just really depends on the professor that you want to work with and how they view and evaluate your background. One other piece of feedback that I got when I was applying to PG programs is that it's very valuable to be able to do math and to know how to code if you want to do machine learning, especially theoretical machine learning, because a lot of times people can only do one thing, and if you can do multiple things, if you have interdisciplinary skills, like cross-disciplinary skills, it's very valuable. So maybe like if you're just starting college and you're not sure what field you want to go to, definitely explore multiple fields and not feel the pressure to choose one specific thing when, you, when you're just like 17, 18, 19 years old. Definitely explore and eventually I think you'll find something you like. Um, a lot of people ask me how I ended up in applied mathematics, so let me briefly address this now. As I said, I came to college as an astrophysics major and I did a lot of astrophysics in high school and then uh, the first couple of years I did research in, in college and uh, I realized that a lot of the things that I was doing was not really... like you didn't need to have a substantial astrophysics background to do research in astrophysics. Like all the things that you need to know for a particular project in astrophysics you could learn it specifically for the project. You didn't need to have a degree in my opinion. A lot of the things that I did was programming and some kind of math. And so I realized that, okay, maybe I should invest more time into learning how to code and do more math, mostly do more math, um, because it is a foundation for anything that you do in research these days. Any kind of research you do in STEM fields, I feel like, it relies on mathematics. And you usually do a lot of coding, a lot of simulations, something you do with code. So 
I was like, okay, I, I want to have some good foundations, so I'm gonna major in mathematics because that's what I like. I like abstract ideas, I like very pure mathematical concepts, very unrelated to the real world, like topology or abstract algebra, all this stuff. But eventually, I want to have some impact in the real world, I want to solve some important problems that we have here on Earth in our society, maybe some technological problems or some social problems or something. So I was like, okay, it's not just pure mathematics that I'm interested in, it's actually applied mathematics because I want to apply mathematics to solving important problems in some scientific field or some other field. So that's how I went to apply mathematics. And I had this realization the summer before my senior year of college, so it was like right before PhD applications. Yeah, so I had many research experiences in college and therefore I had good letters of recommendation. I had three letters from a math professor, a physics professor and an astrophysics professor at Princeton and I think they were all pretty strong. So the, the professors that wrote letters of recommendation for me, the projects that I worked on, there were one was about exoplanets, studying transit timing variations in exoplanetary systems, another one was about solar physics and machine learning, so basically using tools for machine learning to improve predictions of solar wind uh, magnetic field. and another project which was my senior thesis was on knot theory in particular slice knots and knot floor homology and i was able to present my exoplanet research project at a conference that was organized by the american astronomical society in las vegas and that's pretty much the only conference experience that i had in college also like just for context a substantial part of my college experience was during COVID, so i couldn't do much during those years but one conference experience that i had it was very interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. Speaking of my GPA, I had a pretty high GPA. I had 3.8 when I applied to graduate schools. As I said, in terms of my background, it was mostly in math and physics. In terms of my departmental GPA, so my mathematics GPA, I had a nearly perfect GPA. Speaking of tests and test scores, I did not take the GRE because I don't like tests and I did not want to waste time studying for those tests and paying for those tests and going to some location in New York to take that test. So I did not take it and also after COVID, most of the programs, the vast majority of programs that I considered at least, they were all GRE test optional, so I did not have to take the GRE. And when I talked to my professors at Princeton, they told me that it's helpful to take GRE if you are coming from a not super well-known program or college, or maybe if you're coming from some untraditional background, or maybe you didn't have good grades in college, then it's very helpful to take the GRE to show that you have the academic background and that is helpful to be successful in graduate school. On my PG application, I very briefly mentioned that I also have other interests outside of doing research. I mentioned that I'm interested in making education and research more accessible to underprivileged students and I cited some of my previous experience of what I did in that area. I also mentioned that I founded a student organization at Princeton in response to the war in Ukraine and we raised awareness on campus about what was going on and still is going on and supported Ukrainian refugees. We ran a tutoring program for Ukrainian students. I'm not sure how helpful that was for my application, but I think in general it gives some information about what you care about outside of your research which I think is useful. One of the professors at Princeton that wrote a recommendation letter for me, he's a physics professor and part of the PG admissions committee in physics at Princeton, and he said that it's definitely helpful to include some personal information in your statement of purpose because it is something that is a little bit more memorable about you than just, you know, citing all of your research experiences and gives some insight about who you are as a person. In terms of awards and prizes, I had one physics prize. It's called Manfred Pika Memorial Prize in Physics that I got after my first year at Princeton and it's given for outstanding accomplishments in physics and research. And then another award I received was a university-wide award at Princeton. It's called Santa's Dumont Prize for Innovation and I received it as a result of all of the work that I did around helping Ukrainian refugees after the war started in Ukraine. 
when I was applying to graduate programs, I also applied to fellowships. This is basically external funding that you can receive to support your graduate studies. Usually in all of the top PhD programs, your studies are fully funded and your research is fully funded by the program and your advisor, but it's still very helpful to apply to external fellowships because then you're less of a burden for your PhD advisor or your program. It's much easier to, to get accepted if you have funding. Definitely mentioning on your application that you applied for fellowships is very useful. In my case, I got the National Science Foundation Fellowship and it gives you funding for three years, which is very nice. One other thing that was helpful for my PhD applications, I think, is the fact that I met my PhD advisor before I applied to graduate programs. So I did the machine learning program at the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton and it was um, called Women in Mathematics program. It's a very famous, relatively famous program for women in mathematics. And every year in May, they conduct a program on some particular topic. And I went to the one that was on machine learning and my PG advisor there was a speaker. I guess going to these kinds of events, like some conferences, some programs in your field of interest is very valuable because you can meet the people who work in your field, meet potential collaborators, advisors, other students who are interested in your field. It's all very valuable, so I definitely recommend going to these kinds of events and programs if you are able to. So that was pretty much all that I included on my PhD application. I also mentioned, I think, the fact that I worked many jobs on campus in college. I think I worked six jobs in total in college, which is a lot. I don't recommend that, but I had to. That was my background, my experience, things I did in college that helped me get into Harvard's PhD program in applied mathematics. I hope this video was useful and hopefully made the PhD application process a little bit more transparent or you have a better understanding of what goes into a PhD application. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Once again, definitely check out the link in the video description and go get the beautiful jewelry from Annalisa. Thank you, Annalisa, for sponsoring this video. I'll see you very soon. Bye.